Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jayakuma. I'm very glad to meet you all in the brand new lecture series on the subject Dynamics of Machinery. It's always fascinating to teach and learn design subjects, isn't it? It is lecture one on introduction to dynamics of machines. Before going to that, I really would like to thank all my student community and faculty colleagues who have given enormous magnificent support so far to all my books, especially to this kinematics of machinery and dynamics of machinery for more than 15 years now. At the end of this video, if you could be able to watch you till the end, you should be able to clearly differentiate between the scope of kinematics of machines and dynamics of machines. And of course, you should be able to understand and explain the overview of the dynamics of machinery course as such. As you are aware, this dynamics of machines course is coming under design stream in continuation to engineering mechanics KOM, the DOM becomes a very important subject under this design criteria. What are the key requisites for this course? Of course, the statics and dynamics is your prerequisite. Then KOM, you, you need to be aware of this differential and integral calculus. You know that it is a part two of theory of machines. Other names for theory of machines is mechanics of machines. Its name implies it has two components, mechanics and machines. So let us talk about machines. What we see here, sewing machine, some kind of a old engine, then there's a washing machine, all are called machines. We might have studied already. What is the difference between machine and mechanism? Let us take the classical example of this IC engine. What that mechanism says? Mechanism is a, only a conceptual skeleton outline of the machine, which only concentrate on the motion. So for example, if it is an IC engine, I have my chemical energy or fuel energy from my petrol or diesel, which is having a thermal energy. During the combustion, the thermal energy, you know, is getting converted because of the combustion. It exerts pressure on the piston head and the ends, this crank rotates. So thermal energy is converted into mechanical energy. So to convert that motion from this reciprocating motion to this rotary motion, I need this mechanism. This mechanism is what we call slider crank mechanism. Now what happens, energy comes into picture. We can transmit and modify both motion and energy with the available set of all the other associated components and parts and hence it can transmit and modify energy, then we can call it as a machine. Or in other words, we could clearly say that all machine by default will have one or more mechanisms. So in this IC engine, we have slider crank mechanism. First, we should know that, so mechanical engineers, what they do? Mechanical engineers, normally they do designing, analysis, manufacture, then of course, install mechanical systems. What are mechanical systems? Systems that has moving parts, moving components. So for a design engineer, the most important thing is we should be able to study the relative motion between the various moving parts. So one should study relative motion between the various parts of the machine. So in that machine, there will be many forces acting on them. This is what we call theory of machines. So in the theory of machines or mechanics of machines, it involves these two things. So this is what we are going to illustrate uh, with some example. Now, what is that uh, domain or scope of kinematics of machines and dynamics of machines? These are the two branches of theory of machines. So already this is part one you have completed in your previous semester. This is what we are going to study now, part two. So this is a very classical example of IC engine. So this is a typical 
IC engine. Okay, so this is my input energy during the combustion stroke. Combustion happens, so the air plus fuel mixture expands because of the expansion due to very high pressure. It exerts thrust on the piston head. When it exerts thrust on the piston head, what happens? The piston reciprocates. Then, because of that, this oscillatory motion of the connecting rod is converted into rotary motion of the crank. So, here, what are the various components? This is crank whose length is R. This is connecting rod. Let the length be L. Let at any point of time theta, now I wanted to determine what is that displacement of piston. At one particular time t, say when t equal to 10 seconds, let us freeze this IC engine. When it is frozen, I assume that the theta, some angle theta, say theta equal to 45 degree. When theta is equal to 45 degree, at that point, what will be the displacement of the piston I want to determine? And also, I would like to know the velocity of piston and acceleration of the piston as well. And also, I might be interested to find same way velocity acceleration of connecting rod of crank as well. Since crank has angular rotation, I might be needing angular velocity omega. And also both are having, you know, a kind of a rocker mechanism. So I need to know their angular acceleration of connecting rod and crank. Determination of velocity, acceleration and displacement are technically known as kinematic variables. So in this IC engine, if my aim is to determine only kinematic variables, then I call this subject as kinematics of machines. So determining kinematic variables is known as KOM. This kinematics of machines normally will have two types. One is analysis of mechanism. Another one is synthesis of mechanism. In this analysis only, I'm going to find kinematic variables or we call motion or geometrical characteristics of machine parts. This is what we call it as displacement, velocity, acceleration, omega, angular acceleration, and so on. In the synthesis, we are going to talk about for a given application, what are the type of mechanism we are going to use, which we call it as type synthesis. This is type synthesis. So for the given application, what should be the type of mechanism one should use? Another one is known as number synthesis. It says what should be the number of links, number of joints that are to be used in order to obtain the prescribed required input and output motions. Right. The third one is known as dimensional synthesis. The dimensional synthesis talks about what should be the dimensions of each and every link. What should be the degrees of motion? All these two components you have covered under kinematics of machines. Here, the important thing is you never studied about forces causing this motion. So forces are not studied, not considered, though they are acting on them. So that, that's the reason why you could recollect that. What we have studied is you might have studied about CAM, where you have studied about velocity acceleration, jerk of your different, you know, displacement uh, motions of your CAM. And you might have talked about gears, gear trains, where predominantly they are to do with the velocity analysis, right? So now, in the dynamics of machines, they have the same engine, no, all the same, but 
we are going to talk about what is the force acting here the thrust acting on the cylinder head then what will be the normal reaction given by you know the cylinder on the piston and is there any weight you know of the piston acting downwards what will be the weight of the connecting rod acting downwards if the weight acts here what will be the force acting along the connecting rod what will be the force acting here you know at the crank pin because this plays a vital role this crank pin i i think presumably this side this force multiplied by r is what we call you know torque turning moment which is the most important thing then what will be the force acting along the crank that's more important because that force what will act on the crankshaft bearing if the force is more then the bearing will fail so what essentially i am talking about here is i am talking about various forces acting in in an ic engine so here we are getting the term force here the newton second law of motion f is equal to ma comes into picture here because of the rotation i might have centrifugal force say m omega square r so all these are to do with force even i might use the word a uh, turning moment which is nothing but a force into distance so these all are coming under dom so dom is essentially study of various forces acting on a given machine but can we study dynamics of machinery directly no when i say f is equal to ma newton's third law of motion by default we have acceleration i could say this i want to find forces acting on a piston for example to calculate force acting on a piston i should know acceleration of piston in order to study that dom we are anyway going to use all the concepts that you have studied under kom so essentially i could simplify this way dom study is actually as within itself kom you know findings then from force study then this becomes dom so this is about dynamics of machines in this course what are the subjects that we are going to study in the unit number 1 we are going to talk about force analysis as i said so these are the various forces which we are going to talk about there so under that we have static force analysis and dynamics force analysis the extension of this concept is known as turning moment diagram and flywheel flywheels are being used everywhere right we have uh, just seen one example here this is typically flywheel so what is the role of the flywheel if flywheel is not there what will happen to ic engine why in punching machines and riveting machines the huge wheel is there that is a flywheel what is the application how we are going to design flywheel that's what will be covered in unit number 1 in unit number 2 we are going to talk about balancing of machines balancing of rotors if you take a shaft assume that there are many components are mounted say three gears are mounted two pulleys are mounted obviously those masses will not be balanced they will be unbalanced so what will be the effect of the unbalancing will be vibration so we need to know how to balance the unbalanced forces if any so we are going to study about them and uh, balancing of single rotating mass and balancing of several rotating masses you might have seen when you change a new tire of your car simply we can't remove and change it they do some balancing check they might put it in a one balancing machine and when they switch it on it will show in which direction there is unbalanced force in order to balance that they will take a small balancing mass you might have found on the rim of that wheel they mount that small m in order to counterbalance the unbalanced force so that your wheel will not be wobbling so that your car will be stable 
So this is what very interesting concept we call it as balancing. What I have talked about is a balancing of rotating machinery. Same way there will be many unbalanced forces even during reciprocating motion, in reciprocating machines. There are many reciprocating machines are there. You take a pump, you take a compressor, you take an IC engine, you take a, you know, any machines which involves reciprocating components. So how they are going to be done? All these interesting subjects will be doing it in unit two. Unit three is a continuation. Three and four are continuation of unit two. When it is not balanced, vibration will happen. Whether in a mechanical term, vibration is a good thing or bad thing, by and large, it's a bad thing. Vibration reduces the, you know, life of the components. So they need to be minimized, reduced. So we start with different types of vibrations. When a shaft rotates, it undergoes vibration. So what are the various types of vibration we are going to study in this unit number three? Please understand that practical scenario, all three types of vibrations are existing, coexisting. Sometimes one type of vibration will be very predominant over the other one and hence we ignore them and we consider the major one and solve the practical problem. So this interesting subjects we are going to talk about unit number three. Right. This is what uh, we are going to study under free vibration. Free vibration means uh, without any external excitation. But practically speaking, all vibration problems are forced vibrations in nature. You take a car problem. There is a suspension system. Right. There are some spring suspensions and the tire tube, you know, the wheel all there. The body, when it goes over the rough road, it vibrates. So I want to design that. So what can I do? I can convert that body into a mass. We call it as spring and a damper system. So the practical problem can be idealized into spring mass damper system. That's what we are going to study under forced vibration. So we need to say there is an unbalance in the rotary motion. That unbalance will cause the vibration. When I talk about the vibration, these are the parameters. I am going to talk about the frequency of the vibration. I am going to talk about the amplitude of the vibration. So how to reduce them, right? These are all the things we will be studying under this unit number four. The last unit is still fascinating. We are going to talk about mechanical feedback devices. These two are mechanical feedback devices. Governor. Another one is gyroscope. So, what the governor does, where are they used popularly? What is the working principle? So all that we are going to study. Then this would be more fascinating. Gyroscope. Whenever we have a rotating body and its axis of spin like this, body will rotate. Any rotating body changes its direction of axis. Then there will be one external couple will be acting on you. That couple is known as gyroscopic couple. When a ship or an aeroplane as long as it moves in a straight line, it is not experiencing anything. The moment when it takes a right or left turn, the ship or the aeroplane experience of gyroscopic couple, it is acting on that ship or aeroplane, which destabilizes it. How can I overcome that? Measuring that gyroscopic couple, I need to produce externally in the opposite direction one reactive gyroscopic couple that will put our vehicles in stability. So these are the fascinating concepts that one we are going to study uh, in this uh, course, uh, Dynamics of Machinery, right? If you talk about the textbook, of course, I'm going to follow the book, uh, you know, which is written by me. This is published under Lakshmi Publications, Chennai. So all my illustrations, problems, definitions are uh, taken from uh, this book right that's it so you can uh, go through the recap hope you understand all that you got your overview about this course okay. thanks for watching please keep watching all my upcoming series on this dynamics of machines thank you so much bye